Perfect. Thank you. So uh, today's why today's dialogue is special for me, and I want to talk a little bit about that, and then of course introduce our guest of the day, Shireen El Bogtadi. Shireen, uh, I met about ten years back for the first time. I actually came to hear about Shireen when I was working for a large organization in Asia, Middle East Africa as the head of HR. And uh, one of my direct reports uh, shared with me, I was planning a visit, uh, travel to Cairo. And he said, I want to talk to you uh, about someone you're going to meet when you're there. And he briefed me about Shirin. And I uh, landed in Cairo. Uh, and I, I had set up a meeting with Shireen for breakfast. And I see in this hotel, Shireen walks in with a very broad smile on her face. So it's like, it was my first ever visit to Cairo. And I, I was like, do I really know Shireen? Have you ever met? Because that's the kind of feeling I, kind, I experienced just looking at her, no conversation, no dialogue. We had breakfast together. Then, Shireen, uh, you drove me to the factory in your car. And we had this 45 minutes conversation on the way about who she is and what she stands for. And I found uh, an immediate connect with Shireen, uh, the human, the person in Shireen. Uh, and then that whole visit uh, was extremely pleasant and uh, something I remember it even till date, the conversations, the dialogues, not because of the great work she was doing, but the kind of human or the person she was. And then we had a very uh, unique and sad incident in one of our factories. And I always believed in my own life that tough times, tough situations, uh, basically bring out either the best in you or the worst in you. So how people show up when they're challenged, when they are uh, you know, faced with choices in life. And we all make those choices. And I think one of the toughest professional situations in my life and career, Shireen was the person who made a choice to show up stronger than probably anyone I know in my, in my entire life, in my entire career, to guide the way, to show the way and stand up and deal with the situation like no one. I would never be able to do what she did in that moment. So I think till that time, I felt I was kind of meant to, because we, we developed a friendship when we met for the first time. So I felt I was kind of mentoring or guiding Shireen. And I don't know, somewhere on the way, the roles shifted because then I started to look up to Shireen. You know, when I am in a situation, a difficult situation, faced with a problem, how should I show up? And in my mind, I had the template of Shireen, that this is the way I want to show up if I'm faced or challenged with a situation like that. So Shireen, um, thank you so much for inspiring me and inspiring so many other people, because I know there are folks also on the call today, but there are so many people who have uh, seen you and who have been inspired by you. So without further ado, I am so delighted today to present our guest of our LEH Dialogue, Shireen El Bogtadi. Over to you, Shireen. The tool, we didn't agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't agree. I was planning to start with fun and the smile on my face, but now you're bringing uh, sort of tears. It's uh, overwhelming. It's very uh, overwhelming at all. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon at all. Uh, I'm so overwhelmed. Uh, thank you so much. At uh, just um, a great, uh, I, I was reflecting today that this is a great event in my life. Sometimes events happen in our life and uh, it, con it continues to be a touch uh, that takes us and we never forget uh, for today being hosted by Atul, an exceptional inspiration, a role model for me and being hosted um, and having that dialogue with you, just a great recognition for me as a person. It's, a, it's really a great recognition for me. Uh, and I have always tell you that um, you have believed in me a lot. You have pushed me a lot. Um, and I hope that I'm always up to your expectations and your expectations are too high uh, because it tackles too much when it comes to emotional, uh, human reality. Uh, your expectations are totally different than anyone I have ever met. 
um, I hope I continue the good human that uh, that inspired you one day. Um, I thank everyone on the call. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, my humble story and uh, intervention would be an added value or a source of inspiration or even just uh, a nice chat, a nice light chat. We miss that, by the way. And you know, while we are running all our crazy days, uh, we miss to, to, to come together with such diversified people. Uh, I see the names on the call. It's just great to slow down, uh, reflect, and uh, and have a nice chat. Uh, thank you in advance for hearing me. And yeah, let me share uh, my story, I would say, if we help me, Sophia was uh, sharing the slide. Yeah, so this is me. It's just uh, the first statement actually reflect uh, who I am. Uh, I, I realized that like everyone, I have different hats uh, that I do play. I'm being a wife or an amazing uh, life supportive life partner. Uh, after a love story, we ended up with having two amazing boys who are really giving me all the love in the world. I'm a sister for three brothers. In the following uh, photo, uh, those uh, naughty, uh, funny brothers that I'm blessed to have and my great parents, my mom and my dad. Um, I can continue to play another hat. So uh, trying to be a good daughter uh, I'm an aunt. I have my brothers gave me lovely uh, kids um, and being a friend. Uh, and uh, and by the way, at all when I'm, I'm writing the statement, I said I write, just wrote it that way and I stopped and reflected, should I prioritize and uh, add the, the different roles uh, based on the priority of the most impactful one for me and most important one for me. But I just realized, let, let it leave it uh, that way. Um, I'm happy that I'm playing different roles in other lives and blessing blessed by lots of people around me. Yeah, I have been working for HR for the last 22 years and that uh, it's a blessing for me because I have been pleasured and, and honored by serving people uh, for the last 22 years and I think that is still not enough, not enough at all. I have a lot to give, I have a lot to learn I, ha I own uh, the people around me a lot. So I continue, if I choose to uh, continue working, I would still continue doing uh, human capital or human resources uh, to, 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 to play the human part of me. Um, I have built my professional experience in different uh, angle. One of them was crisis management and being human as mentioned by Atul. And maybe we will talk about the, the this uh, big incident that impacted my uh, personal and professional life, but sometimes work gives us the opportunity to realize uh, the importance of leading with humanity. Um, my passion is always to support individuals grow, and uh, this is what I love to do. Uh, I, ne I need to give opportunity, and I work very hard to give opportunity to enable people um, to work hard uh, in order to uh, realize eyes, uh, whom I am through serving people and being close to people. Uh, values that uh, would guide me, yes, I chose those couple of values and actually those values remain unchanged for me. I mean, whenever I go to this uh, slide and I revisit it, it looks like, yes, those are the most important ones that matter the most. Uh, fairness is very important. And when I say fair is being giving everyone uh, an opportunity. It's uh, everyone of us deserve an opportunity. Everyone can make a difference. Um, respected, so I appreciate being respected and, uh, and respect others, especially when we are different. Uh, I would love to welcome differences always, respect minds, even if they are simple, respect the emotions, even if they are not justified or extreme or even dry. Uh, every one of us has his own or her own uh, reasons for that. Uh, respect the views, respect religious backgrounds, beliefs. Uh, for respect means a lot for me. A bold, uh, yeah, bold for me. It's like uh, describing being how how I come as 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 a person. Being myself is one of the description of being bold. Putting my fears aside, uh, say, saying what's right, and have an open heart for everyone. Uh, Actually, this is where I see the definition of the value of being bold. Um, and finally, I believe that every one of us has a mission. We are not here by chance. Everyone has a mission. So um, I always try to remind myself that I'm here for a purpose. 
don't just let it pass unless I complete this. Yeah, so what uh, get I where I'm from where I get my energy, I uh, think being close to people is very important to me. I get my energy from people whenever I'm down, I go and meet and have chat and have coffee. Uh, this is where I uh, re-energize myself. Uh, I'm an achiever person, so whenever I did something good, uh, that as well uh, get my energy back. And uh, I was just telling uh, <laughs> at all that uh, cappuccino or the cup of coffee is very important to my energy level as well. And uh, how I go inside the box or what uh, what makes me not that happy or limited is uh, actually a couple of things. I just realized when I uh, looking at the slide now that uh, it's opposite to my values. It's, uh, I didn't I didn't mean to relate, but uh, injustice. And justice makes me uh, go inside the box, being uh, being um, thinking that someone uh, was unfair, um, limitation as well. So being limited, uh, and finally is uh, delay. And delay, when uh, I didn't mean here, not only in time, uh, but delay in maybe realizing something, delay in missing a chance to express a point of view or sharing a feeling. Yes, we always say that uh, never, it's too late. And uh, this is what continue to uh, bring me back again out of the box and re-energize myself. So, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's me. If I go to the following slide, and I always say, uh, who are the people that uh, who are my inspirer? Uh, who inspires me? Uh, and I realize that I'm blessed of having many people uh, around me. Um, whom has inspired me at a certain period of time or have been influenced some of my career decisions or my life decisions uh, or even changed my way of uh, seeing things. Uh, I'm inspired of many friends, colleagues. Um, I'm inspired by the difficulties that others have in their lives. And, and I have carefully uh, selected those couple of uh, photos to have them um, uh, today to share um, and, and, and see everyone how bold they react when they keep going on, uh, yeah, and 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 see at all on top of the on top of the picture. One of the top of the picture is my the union of my one of uh, one one of the unions of my former employer, uh, and people uh, usually surprise how you get inspired by the union and those are troublemakers. And, but I appreciated a lot to those people with their kind of kind, simple requests. And, uh, and their uh, persistence and determination, uh, they, I learned a lot, a lot of those uh, people around me. A um, couple of uh, friends, couple of leaders, uh, photos here who have really uh, made a difference uh, as I go uh, and I, as I grow. Uh, if I go to the last slide, I would say, yeah, so those couple of uh, gentlemen have uh, actually um, inspired me and shaped me. Yes, they shaped me. I start with the middle. It's the photo of my dad, a great papa. I um, admire his kindness. Uh, his heart always open for everyone. He was like our backbone uh, to me and my brothers and my mom, and even to the full family, big family. Uh, our home, I remember still that our home has been open for everyone, everyone, literally. Uh, I learned from him his commitment, his passion about work. He, he is a dentist. Uh, and his clinic was, I would say, his first home, not the second. <laughs> yeah, we sometimes uh, <laughs> complain a lot about that, but this only shows about his uh, commitment and passion and dreams. Uh, he always looks very high at me. Uh, imagine at all that usually he doesn't say, uh, he doesn't call me Shirin. He say, and this is very funny, <laughs> Your Highness. Oh, Your Highness Shirin. Hi, show Your Highness Shirin. And, and even he go that uh, crazy that he sometimes introduced me to his uh, patients or to his friends that uh, she's my daughter, her, her highness, Shireen. <laughs> so he pushed me a lot uh, for, to become a better person. And he trusted me. He trusted my opinion. Uh, he's full of emotions. This amazing dad. Um, yeah. And the second photo here is Gawed. Gawed is my... Uh, mentor, uh, ex-boss uh, and former president at my previous employer who has led large teams. 
uh, I worked with Gawet, I think, for around 18 years. And I learned from him how being bold and that he has always, despite the, the seniority and he grew into the organization, uh, always the, the first rule that he learned or gave us as a gift for us all is that people always comes right. And he never, never, ever allowed that something would come against uh, our values, despite that leaders, when they grow, there are lots of decisions that they have to make uh, and they are putting into situation that decisions should be made. But again, uh, this will never ever jeopardize the being right and being fair. He shaped my career and he guided me across the way. Uh, he gave me as well lots of hard time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he stand, uh, he always was standing beside me as, uh, as a, a unique leader, a, gr a great leader, uh, building a gen who built a, a great generation after him. I owe him a lot. Uh, and uh, one of the very um, uh, special person that I have met and I was lucky to do that was Atul. Uh, and I learned from Atul how being humble and that human connections can create a uh, great impact. Never ever being limited by hierarchy, even if he's his, the boss of the boss of the boss, <laughs> nor the location. So if he based in US, if he's based in Singapore, I'm here in Egypt that far, but still um, he can create such great impact to everyone. And never the busy agenda can hinder him to support his team and, and the young generation and sponsor lots of us. I learned from Atul how a leader can be show up during the tough time for their teams. Um, and yet, uh, because of the support and the emotional support, I would say that uh, I, I was given and blessed by Atul during the incident time. And not only the incident time, I think Atul, you shaped... Uh, you encourage me a lot to take even greater career decisions and you have always been a reference for me. Um, yes, you, you kept to ask me questions and not to give me the answer directly. <laughs> uh, but again, those couple of questions, whenever I come, I cry to you, I need help. Uh, you guided me a lot and I'm very thankful to have you in my life, shaping me the way I am. Uh, that's it. That's uh, that's uh, that's what I wanted to share, and uh, and I open a tool for a lovely dialogue. Fabulous, fabulous. Shireen, first, I am honored to see myself on this screen. I feel great. You've just made my day, and uh, this is, by the way, just a reflection of who you are, and I think your kindness and your uh, magnanimity to give people credit for probably what they are not. So uh, your story, by the way, I probably am one of those few on the call who already know Shireen better than the rest of the audience. Uh, so I have a sneak peek, but I like to ask you a few questions which will help uh, our audience to experience who you really are. Um, everything you said, by the way, in terms of your inspiration, in a, in a very simple way, Shireen, but there is a lot of character which sits bes besides that simplicity, which you called out. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll have some questions to start the conversation, but I'm also going to request our audience on the call. So if you have any questions for Shireen, you can bring it up in the dialogue box. So I will keep on bringing those questions up to Shireen as we go on with our conversation. So feel free, anything in your mind you want to ask, you want to know more, please use the dialogue box to uh, put your question or raise your hand so we can uh, bring you up on the screen. So my first question, Shireen, for you, this is not a grilling interview, by the way. This is more of a, of a conversation. It's like you and I are having a coffee maybe in, in Cairo in our office. So tell me, uh, Shirin, you made some bolder choices in your career. You pushed outside, uh, pushed yourself outside your comfort zone. Um, and a couple of times we even spoke when you were making those choices. You did it with a lot of uh, conviction and a lot of comfort. What makes you uh, get outside your comfort zone and make those choices uh, with conviction? Yeah. 
uh, I think at all, uh, my, my values guided me a lot in, uh, in, in, in that perspective. So making a choice is always I have to refer to my own purpose, uh, who I am, uh, what I do, what are my passion. Um, so what's behind my choices was always been in the background, my passion, my values, and what I really need to do. Fabulous. And very interesting you say that, Shireen, because uh, I'm a big believer in that because the values are your guardrails. They guide you, uh, especially during the time of difficulties. It's much easier to make a complex or difficult choices. Yeah. And I think yeah. you're a living example of that. Uh, my next one is about uh, the experiences which have shaped your thinking. Yeah. You know, those early experiences or career experiences, which basically influenced uh, the, the kind of person you are today. Yeah, that's a nice question at all. So early experiences, if I have an early thoughts about uh, some early memories uh, while, while I was a child, I would say that uh, I still visualize my elder brother. And by the way, my elder brother is only two years older than me and how responsible he acted uh, towards me as uh, being the small sister uh, while we were kids. I still visualize how he uh, used to hold my hand <laughs> while we are going to the school. Uh, he has to escort me first uh, to the class and then he goes uh, to his class. And by the way, a couple of years after he just uh, told me that he has been penalized a lot because he was late to his class. <laughs> So I, that's a, that's a, that's a responsibility that he created. So I, I it came to I I, I came uh, bigger, and then I realized that uh, that this is actually one of the things that I learned from him that being responsible. I I still remember that he continued to protect me, to 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 stand for me, uh, and gave me a lots of love that I have never um, uh, would, 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 would get it from elsewhere. Even when in my wedding, he just felt that I just colors, he completed his mission and he cried a lot uh, in my wedding day. And now as we grew up, he has a certain medical condition. And, um, and now I am in a position that I am responsible back and I have to give to him. I have to take care of him and I have to uh, owe him a lot what he did across the journey that we had together. But ownership and responsibility was one of the, um, the, the, the great things that I have learned while I'm still a kid. If I uh, reflect on the early experiences from professional side, and I, I still remember early in my career when I used to, to work in, uh, in the factories, uh, very close to the workers and to the unions, and I realized that uh, those workers and those unions actually have a very... Um, minimal, simple requests and needs. Uh, they just have some fundamental things that they come to work for. So um, this shaped the way that I led for people. And, and, and now as a growing as an HR leader, senior leader, just uh, while we are doing all the strategies, all the structure, all the culture, all the negotiation, <laughs> compensation, every big things that we are busy in the corporate life with, I always remember that the massive, around 90% of most of the industry population are those simple workers who have simple needs. Um, and that's definitely changed uh, my vision of seeing things and uh, the way uh, I lead uh, when, when it comes to the professional uh, part. Yeah, I think uh, that's, uh, the, that's it at all. Fabulous, Shireen, fabulous. Uh, by the way, you know, your story uh, of your bro brother being the guiding light, um, I can very, very closely relate to my own story. My brother is two and a half years older and I've looked up to him all my life. And whenever I am kind of in some kind of stress, I know there is someone around me who will take care of uh, it even today. And I think your second comment, Shireen, I also started my career in a factory, first eight years dealing with the unions. And you summed it up so um, so effortlessly and so with so much simplicity that in the end, everybody is a human being. And we create our own templates in terms of how people step up and how do we need to deal with them. Their needs are simple. And if you connect with people at a human level, 
then the conversations, the relationships, the connections are much deeper than just following a certain template. And I've actually seen you, uh, you know, walking with you on the factory shop floor and how people look at you. I mean, I, um, I at certain time used to take pride in this, that, you know, when people look at you, you can see in their eyes what kind of connection they have with you. And I think uh, when I walked with you in those plants, I could see the connection you had built by being who you are, not by virtue of your position or role um, which you performed. So fabulous, fabulous response. Uh, my uh, question to the audience, feel free, by the way, if you have any questions, I'll keep on. I have a long list uh, to ask, but I will uh, kind of entertain questions in between. Mark, my friend, Mark Brown, can you come on uh, on screen and ask your question yourself? Mark? Hi, Atul. Hey, Mark. I'm just, I'm in Australia at the moment and my, my internet is not so good, but I will try. Yeah, hey, it's uh, 10.30 at night. And what I what I was asking is um, actually I was making a comment, Shireen. You look very young, so not everything you're tell, telling us about is your life experience, because you're too young to be so experienced. But was was there an event in your life or career that defined the the way you approach working with people? Yeah, thank you for the question, Mark. And I think. One of the change gamer uh, event that I hope that no one would experience that. Uh, I, I really hope that everyone would never ever experience what I have experienced was was the uh, unfortunate uh, event, sad event of explosion have happened and a former uh, my former employer, which caused into uh, fatalities and injuries and 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 a bad a very very bad uh, status uh, unlucky situation um and i think that uh it's a life change experience uh, and of course this is not i'm not talking about the prof professional side professional yes we through this uh, situation of course we learned a lot about crisis management uh, how, how to act with media how to act with uh, government um how to help the business to return back but it's not uh, at all this which is a great learning experience i would say of course it's a great learning experience but it's not about that it's uh, just about the the personal side that going in depth into the life of different around mm -hmm. 24 families at the time uh having them losing their uh, their owner understanding their struggles witnessing even their good and bad because people you know people react in such crisis in in a different ways uh with their own of course respected reason but the crisis uh, and tough time um and how people can react was a key learning for me stepping up uh, in the situation and deciding that it's not about my job mm, yani, uh, working as an hr would never ever justify that I go to the hospitals, I go to the, I travel three hours, four hours to to meet the families, um, go to the court when needed. Uh, this never ever will justify my my job. So the, the decision that I took that um, I'm here for a purpose. And that's why I don't take the credit to myself because I had as well uh, colleagues with me doing the same and even maybe more. Uh, but the decision that we took that uh, it's not about our job, it's not about the professional hat, it's more about how we act as a human and how we can help those families yeah. uh, to come up with out of this uh, situation. Um, yeah, for that was uh, one of the great, uh, great uh, events that I have uh, witnessed and I have learned, learned a lot, a lot. And actually not about learning, it's about uh, defining the way uh, I am and uh, changing my mm way that I, I see things uh, and appreciating more uh, and more the impact that we can create um, if we took off or if we look um, in a different way or a different angle. And thank you for the oh. question. Oh, thank you so much. That's that's so lovely, Shireen. You're very lovely. 
Very lovely. And I'm happy that uh, that I'm looking young. That's a, that's a positive thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's an old man telling you that. So. <laughs> Great. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. So, Shireen, I actually maybe want to add uh, a little bit on that incident. And I, I, by no means I want to trigger a reflection or emotional kind of revisiting a tough situation because I was, uh, you know, in, in that situation a little far away, but closely walking and watching and observing. And I think, uh, as you rightly said, no job, no preparation, no emergency action plans prepare you to deal with a situation like that. We have all worked with large companies and we have spent a ton of time creating those strategies, how to deal with surprises, how to deal with accidents. But as you so nicely called out uh, in your response to Mark, that nothing prepares you for no job, no, no employment, no commitment. It's a choice you make. It's a choice you make because the person you are. Um, I remember you decided to go to the plant right when this incident happened. And yeah. I think it was middle of the night. It was a night shift. Yeah. You drove to the factory when people were actually trying to go away from the plant because there was a lot of crowd outside. It was a tough situation. You you went counterintuitive, if I may say. You know, you went in the opposite direction. What was a thought in your mind, uh, which maybe you may like to share with the audience? And if you're not comfortable, just brush it up. I'll come with my next smart question. <laughs> you, you, you brought lots of memories to, to me, Atul. You brought lots of memories to me. So in that day, I received a call. And I, then I was screaming and screaming. My husband was sitting to me and beside me. And he said, I told him, um, well, I have to go to the plant now. He said, what plant? And I said, my plant. Uh, and then I told him, my plant, people are dying. My plant, is... he said, he was confused. What's your plant? Do you own, <laughs> Do you own a factory? <laughs> Oh, just a bit because I was just in a, like in a, in, 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 in a very bad uh, state and he took me actually and by the way at all he, it was the first time that my husband accompanied me to the factory which is around one hour and a half away from my home and he was wondering it was just a realization for him is this Shireen so, so you go for the last five years you're located there so this uh, long road you, you drive everywhere. So he discovered a lot. And once I I, I I arrived and my colleagues were there and and I have to give again the credit to all um, uh, great people that um, that I was blessed to have them in, uh, at that time. Um, and the crowd was extremely, a bit of a situation like uh, the explosion was not controlled. Uh, um, journalists, um, um uh, fighting uh, uh, and there was a crowd and then I just stand um in the middle and what was I, thought, I, th I still remember that it was a big circle around me and my husband was a bit scared uh, uh, looking he, he can he can't imagine that I will I will be able to control the situation and I just said guys we have to um, get out of this place now because we have to find our colleagues who have unfortunately still, uh, yeah, uh, I don't want to get emotional, but uh, despite the, the the great incident, <laughs> I was able somehow to 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 control the crowd um, and um, allow everyone to take the action. What I had in mind um, in that uh, in that um, in that moment that uh, I'm responsible. Yes, I felt I'm responsible. Um, um, yeah, uh, that's actually the the and I, I and, and why I'm telling you the story that I was screaming and telling my husband my plant my factory is being exploded. It's because my uh, it's a, just uh, a feeling of responsibility and from that moment and and I would say Sufi the couple of names that I that I have to respect and mention that in that situation Muhammad Sufi. Omar Nasser, Mohammed al uh, who were that underground with me, that we we felt the the responsibility and accordingly and the ownership for this 
people and for those families. And accordingly, all the actions that came after was uh, came out of the sense of responsibility. Fabulous, fabulous. Uh, thanks, Shireen. You know, you mentioned about your dad's influence of commitment, responsibility, passion. Um, a lot of these incidents or uh, influences shape us who we are. And as I was saying earlier, the crisis brings the best or the worst out of us. So that's a choice you made. And I think that choice, I mean, I can say because I have a line of sight, you actually saved lives by being there and helping to deal with that situation. So it's so, so wonderful to, to hear that story again. Okay, now I'm going to ask you a lighter question. So let's make <laughs> a, little, a little softer. So what gets you up every day and get excited? Okay, I got to go face the day. What do you do, Shireen? What gets you up every morning? <laughs> Should I say? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I get up to dress up, uh, to feel young, as Mark mentioned, and beautiful, <laughs> to feel healthy, to laugh loud. By the way, I have uh, one of the biggest, uh, highest. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, I get up every day to meet people. Of course, if I reflect deeply what makes me continue and get up that I have my kids, my family. Uh, so again, it's a sense of responsibility. Uh, but uh, I get up to go to work. Um, yes, I go to work to, to have my salary at the, the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if I have the choice to stay home and still get the salary, uh, but uh, would be what would be my choice would be, again, uh, that I go work every day to fulfill my commitments, uh, to serve people, to connect with the people. Uh, yeah, so this is what... Uh, <laughs> get me up every day fabulous thanks thanks very much shireen okay so i'm going to take another question from a very very inspirational person for me and i'm so glad sibylle you are on the call today so why don't you come on screen and ask your question to shireen sibylle shulu from south africa Hi, uh, Asfu. Hi, Shireen. I'm going to try and come on camera. Uh, oh. Great to see you. Oh, you can see me. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to miss this one. So thanks, Atu, for organizing it and uh, um, listening to Shireen's inspirational story. Um, I had, you know, the honor of uh, working also with Shireen for a couple of years um, in, in, in Mondelez before she moved on. Um, yeah, and I wasn't in the company when this, uh, you know, tragic in, um, incident happened, Shireen. I'm hearing about it for the first time um, to this level of detail that you've just given. And I can imagine um, the trauma that uh, follows you from, from that. Um, and I just want to know, you know, how do you keep saying every day, having experienced something like that, um, and move on from it. And, and, and I love the fact that you felt responsible because that's just who you are and that's the type of leader who cares about others. But how do you get to a point where you realize that some things will happen no matter how hard and, and how best our intentions are? There are things that are just going to happen um, because something went wrong somewhere. Um, so whilst you hold yourself responsible, how do you not blame yourself um, yeah. and, and make sure that you are well enough to move on and, and, and do the awesome work that you do? Yeah, great question. Great question and great uh, reflection. And uh, it helped me actually now to reflect. So the trauma, um, I think the trauma was in, in, in one angle uh, while... Um, the added value or the positive thing was um, still if out of this situation, I came up with lots of positive things. The trauma is, and very, it's a do not uh, laugh at me, it's a, very, a bit, or oh, look like a bit uh, <laughs> so simple, or, but one of my trauma that I came after this incident that whenever I, uh, I panic, whenever I smell uh, smoke, uh, it's panic, it's panic, uh, you know, big panic. Uh, 
So whenever I'm sitting at if anywhere, if whenever I I, I just smell anything, it's just uh, the trauma continued. The fear it continued with me uh, till now. Um, the self of responsibility versus the blame. Um, this actually, um, um, I we were lucky that we that this did not happen because out of the investigations and out of the attention. And that that uh, the the really that the deep investigation happened from everywhere. It re we realized that we were not mistaken. It was just a uh, uh, a learning for the full industry, by the way. And that at the, after that, my employer took it as a change in the full industry of sugar making. And we have passed this information to the globe. Um, so it was not like um, uh, something that was myth that caused that but this maybe helped a lot that we uh, it's just like an incident that happened and by the way um emergency bail is something that very weird the total shift was impacted the only one person who went out to pray he was survived one week after imagine that it's just maybe it's not like <laughs> it's uh, something in my mind but it's uh, weird that one week after he was uh, going out from home and he was, he had an accident and he died. So apparently that there was a destiny towards those um, people. And I felt at that time after we worked hard to get them the rights and to do what's better for them and for their families after. And this is where all the focus was, uh, was there. How can we help their families? By the way, till now, Till now, I have wives that uh, reach out to me, and I and I keep. I'm not. I'm, I'm still. I, I left Mondelez. I left Mondelez, but I never say that. I just try to as much as I can to still keep the connection and keep helping them. So apparently, it happened for a reason. And um, the positive thing that we try to do that we help those families to come out of it, um, and that what came, what left to me till now, the the positive thing that we try to do out of this tragedy. Thank you, Shireen. Thank you for sharing and uh, wishing you all the best. Thank, Thank you so much and happy to see you. Thanks, Sibylle. And by the way, I'm looking forward to have you as my guest, Sibylle, very soon. So just watch out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Atul. Okay. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, before I go further, I have a comment from Iman. Um, so I'm going to read it on her behalf. Uh, it's in the dialogue box. And it is, so Iman says, uh, it's not a question rather than an acknowledgement. I have only known Shireen for three months. And I've noticed that she's one of the few people who always appreciates and gives credit to those around her. She challenges with kindness and sees the good in most of the bad situations. I hope, Shirin, you understand how lucky you are to have grown up and been shaped by so many role models who believed in you. I wasn't that lucky, but always wished for this. So taking your words on it's never too late. We'll keep waiting for my life changing role models. So, so well said, Iman. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Iman. I'm like, lucky to have you. And uh, thank you so much. This is uh, <laughs> so touching. <laughs> Fabulous. And then uh, I have um, a question from my uh, close partner in LEX, Anuj, for you. Anuj, you want to call it out? Sure, Atul. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Shireen, for such a lovely uh, sharing of your deep experiences that you've had and an inspirational journey that you've had. Uh, my question is, in such a career, uh, you must have had many points in time where you had to make some choices which were conflicting and, you know, to try and balance out priorities in your life. Could you share any one such example, which was a tough decision for you and uh, how you went about making that choice? Uh, that would be very helpful for us to know. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for the question again. We always do tough uh, choices, right? So we have to take decisions and uh, and especially when we lead uh, in, a, in, a, in a much, uh, actually choices and decisions are made all across our ca careers. So what I mentioned uh, that I learned early that uh, putting the head and the heart uh, ahead of us and sometimes prioritizing the heart. Um, one of my area of development, by the way, that uh, a former em employer has used to share with me that you are 
more into people rather than business. <laughs> and I said that if this is one of my area of development, I'm perfectly fine. I will work. I promise I will, <laughs> I will work <laughs> upon it. Uh, but uh, but still, I'm happy that this is considered uh, as one of area of development. But yeah, I can share a couple of examples about difficult situations. You know that I, I'm, I'm sure that the world is always going through that. So one of the things that always came to us is uh, difficult is one inflation, one currency devaluation, impact on salaries, impact on business, impact on restructuring and letting people um, leave. And how should you uh, take those couple of decisions while still you are living uh, your own values? Um, and it's not easy, of course. It's not easy. But we have to 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 do the right balance on um, what's right for the people, how we can deliver the rights in a very respectable way. How can we prioritize what we can do and what we cannot? You know, for example, very simple example that um, I made a rule that whenever anyone who has a medical condition I even if they choose uh, to take their severance and, and leave, I, 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 I ask them not to leave so that because I know that this might deteriorate after. So I created some rules about who can leave and who can stay. Um, and of course, we have to put into consideration what the business will afford, because if I always act for people and and uh, and and and. and made immediate uh, decisions around uh, respond to the currency devaluation, about the inflation, how this will ha ha hard impact the business. Uh, so better to do that is for like phasing the exercise, like doing it in several interventions uh, so that you still serve the people agenda, but as well acknowledge and uh, and support the, the, the business continuation and stability. Um, so again, one rule that has always uh, I kept in my mind while uh, making difficult choices uh, is around the, the 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 interest of people, how the rights are delivered, uh, and then of course uh, with all respect to um, the business uh, where we are all here for again for to deliver something for the business. Uh, other choices I made is one of the difficult choices that I made was leaving my previous employer. So uh, after 19 or 20 years and my previous employer, where I have grew uh, from a very uh, junior person into uh, a, a, a quite a good uh, senior role. And then after 19, uh, 19 or 20 years um, living behind me, my comfort zone, uh, the, 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 at that time, people were saying, no way, that this is a rumor. Shireen will never leave. She's like a brand of the company brands. She's like... A stone or a machine in the factory, she cannot leave. <laughs> I swear. Um, uh, but that was one of the very tough, uh, bold decisions that I made uh, because I felt that now it's about time. I have to challenge myself. I have to uh, go into another perspective. And my tool was mentor at that time. And I went and I asked and I said, "You, yeah, I'm getting this opportunity." Um, and uh, and I encourage everyone that whenever they reach their maximum or their, um, their, 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 yes, whenever they reach the maximum and they found another place where they can unleash themselves, uh, create bigger impact, then uh, be bold about it, take the decision and choose uh, what's right for you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Shiri. Thank uh, you. Thank you for the question. And, you know, I have probably last question I'll keep with myself, Shireen. So among the many talents about Shireen, which the world knows, which is the one which the world doesn't know, which is only only private to Shireen, if you'd like to share that with everyone. <laughs> the talent that I... Uh, um... Yeah, in a couple of uh, couple of situations, people uh, they claim that I have, <laughs> not the other way, way around. But but every time I go into a situation and I get this feedback, and I started, I have that the claim is that I have my own magic. I have my magic stick. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. They say, how did you get uh, how did you get this approval? How did you uh, enable the CEO to? to approve something that we have been trying for years how do you create such impact how do you win people hearts <laughs> you have your own magic they 
they continue to say I have my own magic. Apparently, it looks like I am a tool, but uh, when I, <laughs> but not black magic. It's a it's a positive. <laughs> it's a positive magic. So I would say that uh, I think that the talent that I do have is again putting the people in my heart, following my heart, uh, leading with my heart. And that's actually what uh, may maybe uh, making uh, something unique about me. So so well said, Shireen. And I truly truly hope you know people who are in the role in the positions of influence, leadership roles, or whatever they're doing. I hope they all have the same magic wand as you have. And uh, it it just takes a certain shift in the mindset. And I think you uh, epitomize or you role model what. Uh, what we believe in that every leader has to be a good human being first i think last uh, the time almost flew by we are like three minutes away from the end of the conversation so while i'm tempted to ask more questions i know it's uh, quite late especially for mark mark what time is it it's like 11 in the night i'm assuming around that and there are people on uh yeah about 11, it's 11 now yeah 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 it's okay uh, yeah. i'm happy to be here <laughs> I appreciate that. So we have people on different uh, parts of the geography joining in. But I can only say, Shireen, that every conversation, every dialogue, every connection we have leaves me more inspired to do more because there are humans like you. Your story uh, is compelling. Your story is something which I think all of us can feel a part of it in us. You know, we all face are faced with situations like that. We all have to make choices in the moment. But I think what you do, uh, if it, you did so effortlessly, is to bring to life with your stories and examples of uh, how you can lead a positive life, uh, get inspired and be the inspiration to other people and still create so-called magic with your magic band and create value for your people, for your organization, for your family, for people like me who just admire you and get inspired by you. So I want to thank you for joining us. Um, it was such a pleasure hosting you in this conversation. And uh, I also want to thank everyone who joined this dialogue. Uh, I, I think these conversations and dialogues make uh, us in LEH who we are and remind us what is more important. So this was uh, an extremely uh, inspirational conversation or dialogue. Thank you very much. And by the way, our next dialogue is going to be in the month of July. And that's going to be with Karishma, who's also on the call. And I can see her. And I'm so excited, Karishma, to host you and have you as my guest. Uh, and there's another inspirational story to really bring to the world You know what you can do once you make up your mind. You can be the game changer and you can influence and inspire people around you. So Krishma, looking forward to see you soon in July. And to our guests, thank you very much. Please sign yeah. up for more such conversations. Shireen, have a lovely yeah. fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.